Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to the Hive. In this video, we'll be unboxing and reviewing this new IKEA Tradbury smart plug. We'll take a look at the hardware and build quality and we're going to set it up in three different ways. Standalone, using the IKEA native app, and of course, with Home Assistant. And we're going to break down whether or not it's the right choice for your smart home. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. Let's get started. So while I was filming the four-way light bulb comparison video, I noticed that IKEA's trad-free line had grown to include these smart plugs. So over the Easter long weekend, I found myself at IKEA, and while I was there, I decided I'd pick one up for $20. Now, I just picked up the smart plug by itself, but they do also come in a kit that includes a wireless on and off switch, which looks identical to their wireless dimmer steering device for $30. There are also some shortcut buttons available for $15 and I might take a look at some shortcut buttons in a future video. If we take a look at the packaging, it's fairly basic, it's very Spartan. I see a Wi-Fi symbol here and I'm not quite sure what that's about. Uh, and we've also got this uh, works with IKEA smart home badge here. And on the bottom, we have a Zigbee logo. So I'll be interested to see how this setup works. There's not really much else useful on the box, so let's open it up. Uh, inside the box, we've got the unit itself, and we have an instruction booklet. We've actually got two instruction booklets here uh, and we'll completely ignore those. Now, if we take a look at the unit itself, it's a fairly standard design. Uh, it wouldn't seem out of place as uh, perhaps one of those doorbell chimes for wireless doorbells. Uh, and it's also a very similar design to some double adapters that you might get here in Australia. The build quality feels okay and looks like we've got a uh, 240 volt 10 amp total max loading for 2.4 kilowatts. I do notice that there are no controls on the external uh, unit at all, so uh, that might become a problem. Uh, so what I will do is I will plug this into my set wall over here and we'll turn the power on so that we can get it set up. So I've plugged the unit into the set wall and turned on the mains power and we've got this light on here and I suspect that that means that our load is on. So if I plug my load in here, which is just a lamp that I have over here, um, I'll plug this in and yes, so the load is on. Now what I'm going to do, we need to set this up with a steering device in order to be able to control it remotely. Um, so I have a, one of these IKEA five button remotes. I suspect I may regret using this later. I possibly should have picked up a steering device while I was at IKEA and just spent the extra $10. Uh, this five button remote is for the lamp behind me here, but we can use it with multiple accessories. Now, according to the instructions that I threw away before, I should probably take a quick look here. Uh, we need to make sure that the outlet is plugged in and turned on, uh, and we need to hold the steering device close to the outlet. And in the back of these five button remotes, I've already popped the back off, uh, we need to use the link button for at least 10 seconds. So we need to hold it right next to here and press this link button for 10 seconds. And we actually might be able to see the LED is kind of pulsing a little bit. And I think that's done. Okay, so now that we've got that paired, let's press the button. Okay. So that is interesting. 
interesting. The relay is tripping, but the load isn't turning off. So for whatever reason, the relay is turning on and off when I press the button, but I'm not getting any change in the lamp. So there's clearly a wiring problem inside this switch. I'm not sure what it's switching. Um, I might need to find a different load to test that out, um, which is very odd. So I'll pause the video there and I might find something else to see whether or not I can get something else to switch on and off. Okay, so that's really bizarre. The, um, the smart switch is doing nothing. Um, so I mean, I could almost finish the review there and say that this just is a piece of junk and isn't worth it. I'm gonna need to do a bit more testing on this, I think. I wonder if it's maybe switching against the ground, which is not electrically safe uh, and actually a really bad idea, or maybe I'm just unlucky and I got a faulty unit. We'll proceed though, um, we will do some more setup. So we've got the steering device working with the unit, um, but it's just not switching anything. So uh, for now we'll, we'll proceed as if it were working uh, and go from there. So next up we'll take a look at the IKEA Home Smart app. So I'm going to open the Home Smart app here and we're going to tap on the cog and we're going to tap add new device and the third item down here we have outlet so I'll tap that and we've got a trad free not an ask Vader Lord Vader trad free okay next and we've got plug in the control outlet so we've done that the LED on the front should be on which it is we will click next and we are using a control device uh, that is already connected to the gateway. So we'll click next and we will go over here and hold in this button. Okay, and that doesn't seem to be playing nicely. So maybe, okay, so it's actually already uh, found my outlet because it was uh, because this remote was already paired with my app. So that's why it hasn't paired that way. That's interesting. So I didn't actually need to go through the process of pairing, uh, but you would go through that process if you hadn't already had this remote paired. So now I can turn the switch off and on using the IKEA Home Smart app, which would be great if this unit we're actually switching the load on and off. So there's that. So within the IKEA Home Smart app, we can add some timers if we wanted to, or there's also scenes if we want. But of course we use Home Assistant around here. So we're going to take a look at that next. Now in my previous video about the IKEA TradFree range, I set up Home Assistant to work with the TradFree bridge. If you missed out on that, hit the card in the top right to go take a look. Now, because this is already set up in Home Assistant, we shouldn't need to do very much. If we go to configuration and then integrations, and we'll take a look at the IKEA trad free, and we'll see we've got eight devices and seven entities. If I click the seven entities, we'll see what's in there. So we don't have the control outlet yet. So what I'm going to do is click the three dot stack here in the menu next to IKEA TradFree and I'm going to click reload and the, it was reloaded and we saw that change to nine devices and eight entities and if we click in here we now have the TradFree outlet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back over to my overview and I'm going to scroll down to this switch section here and we see we have TradFree outlet and again we can switch it off and on. And it again is triggering the relay inside the unit, but 
the unit itself is not turning the load off and on. So now if this unit were actually doing what I was expecting it to, we've got that added into Home Assistant and we could use this inside any automations that we wanted to. So in summary, the IKEA Tradfree control outlet has a bunch of pros and cons, if it were working that is. From the pros side, if you were already in the Tradfree ecosystem and have the bridge, it's only 20 to $30 to add some smarts to an otherwise dumb appliance. Whether it's something like a drip filter coffee machine, so you wake up to fresh coffee, maybe a lamp, Christmas tree lights, or something else. We use smart plugs in our home for the downlights in our hallway. Our exhaust fans in the bathrooms are also hooked up with smart plugs to make them automated. And we're using smart plugs for lamps and fans around the house as well. From the con side, the lack of physical controls on the unit itself is just a bit weird. Every other smart plug I've ever tested has always had a manual button that you can press to manually switch the load. Even these Xiaomi smart plugs, which are smaller and can be found cheaper sometimes than the IKEA Tradfree, have a manual button on the top. There's also no energy monitoring on the IKEA unit. Now, energy monitoring isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but at a similar price point, the Xiaomi units have energy metering and the TP-Link Casa Smart also have energy metering and the TP-Links don't require the bridge and they're only five bucks more. And lastly, I think that the cost of entry is a bit of a problem here. Now I'm going to have to test out setting up one of these smart plugs with just using my Zigbee USB stick, which I reviewed in a previous video, because I'd be interested to see how challenging that is but if you are wanting to start experimenting with smart home gear and you wanted to have app control, you'd have to buy the kit with the steering device and that's 30 bucks. And then you've got to get the gateway for another $39, bringing your total to $69. Now, if you're just getting started in smart home automation and smart switches, your money might be better spent on something like the TP-Link Casa Smart Outlets, which you can get the ones without energy monitoring for $20 from Bunnings. Or if you want energy monitoring, you can spend an extra $5 with no need for extra bridges and you could control two to three appliances and then still have money left over to buy Swedish meatballs for dinner. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the IKEA ecosystem and their five button remotes are fantastic. And if you've been watching for a while, you would have even seen me set one of these up without the IKEA bridge to control non IKEA accessories, including this Mirabella Genio lamp behind me. There is absolutely a use case for having a remote switch for your accessories, which we'll probably explore in a future video. You might not have motion sensors or you might want to have different ways to trigger your accessories. I am planning a head to head comparison video on smart sockets in the future. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on that one when I release it. Now, all in all, I'm excited that these smart plugs have finally come to Australia. Because I'm already in the ecosystem and if you've already got the IKEA bridge and steering device, I think these are probably okay. There's certainly nothing wrong with spending 20 to 30 bucks to add some smarts to an otherwise not so smart appliance, even if it is just on and off control. And we'll definitely see how this performs in the upcoming comparison video. I also think that having a company like IKEA making these smart home products available will start to drive further adoption of smart home gadgets and that's a good thing. So I just wanted to give you a quick update. It is several hours later the same day that I filmed the first part of uh, this video and we just got back from IKEA and we returned the broken smart outlet and we've got another one. 
And while I was there, I picked up uh, one of the wireless dimmers. You don't actually need this. I had a quick look at the manual. You can use the five button remotes, uh, so it shouldn't matter. But now we have control using the switch. So that's working as we would expect it. The IKEA Home Smart app is working. And that's all working as expected. And I have integrated it into Home Assistant as well. So if we scroll through here, uh, I removed the old trad free outlet and recreated this. And that is working as expected as well. So that means that you can pretty much ignore the fact that the one in the rest of the video didn't work. Um, it was just a bad unit that I had. Um, as always, IKEA's customer service was fantastic. I went in, I took my ticket number, they uh, provided store credit without question, uh, and then we went through the store and picked up a replacement uh, and just ran the store credit through, and those store credits are just like a gift card and you get a certain amount of time to use them. Um, so all in all, the experience has been actually not too bad. Uh, despite having had a bad unit. To follow up, would I actually recommend this unit? Yes, I think it's great if you are already in the IKEA trad free ecosystem. As I said before though, you can get better value for your money if you wanted to go for something like the TP-Link or even the Xiaomi. If all you actually need from a smart outlet is on and off function, then this is perfectly fine and it's not super expensive if you already have a bridge. If you don't already have a bridge or don't already have a steering device, you basically need to spend the minimum of $30 where you can go and get the TP-Link caster switch for 20 or 25 if you want energy metering. So that's all the time we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in a future video. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so now. While you're at it, be sure to hit the bell icon and you'll get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below and contributions through the buy me a coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. I wanna thank you so much for watching I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.